When it comes to managing heart disease, we are often only given one option, and that is pharmaceutical medication. Sometimes your physician will have a conversation around diet and exercise, but for the most part, it's medication or nothing. And the truth is, there are a lot of good alternative options, especially if you're in the early stages of cardiovascular disease. I'm by no stretch saying that pharmaceuticals are all bad, but what I am saying is often people are not being given alternatives and they're not being educated on all of their options. So with that in mind, I want to talk to you today about a plant that has been used for centuries for heart and vascular conditions. That plant is called motherwort, or if you want to refer to it by its Latin name, it's Leonurus cardiaca. Motherwort is a plant under the mint family, and it is traditionally found in places like Asia and Southeastern Europe. It has a wide variety of uses, with the big three being cardiovascular conditions, anxiety, and gynecological conditions. Now today I won't be talking about the latter two, but it is always important to note that with herbal medicine, often these remedies are able to be used for a wide variety of different conditions because it's the whole plant and there are a wide variety of different compounds in each of these plants that can lend itself to a lot of things. So today we're gonna to focus on the cardiovascular things, but it does have other uses. So in today's episode, I'm going to be going over more specifically what cardiovascular conditions it is useful for, like hypertension, the preparations that are used for this type of plant, and any safety concerns that you might have around it. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Dr. Robin Lewis. I'm a naturopathic physician practicing in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And today, let's talk about one of my favorite plants, which is motherwort. First off, let's talk about its use as a cardiac tonic. This term is something that we talk about in traditional herbal medicine, and it's generally referring to herbs that are protective for the heart. Now that's super generic, so let me get a little bit more specific for you. When they actually looked at this in studies, they found that one of the compounds in motherwort called leonurin, which is one of the things that they attribute a lot of the cardiovascular benefits to, this compound was found to protect the heart during heart attack when they studied this in rats. They found that after the heart attack, markers like creatine kinase and LDH, which are very well-known markers that assess the extent of muscle damage and oxygen deprivation, those weren't as high, which is suggestive that the damage wasn't as high. When they actually went to go investigate this further to look at the actual structural damage, the size of the damage was also reduced, which is very suggestive that this compound helped protect the heart against that heart attack and lessen the damage. They've also studied motherwort when it comes to damage to the blood vessels. In this animal study, they found that another compound found in motherwort called stachydrine, or at least I think that's how we're supposed to pronounce it, this particular compound was helpful for mitigating the damage that is associated with something called homocysteine. So homocysteine is a marker that we measure in the blood that when elevated will increase our risk for cardiovascular disease, so heart attacks, stroke, Alzheimer's, and this homocysteine itself is quite damaging to the blood vessel walls. So it will lead to more advanced plaque formation and things like that. And so this compound found inside of motherwort seemed to at least counteract part of that, which has huge implications because as I said, the damage to the blood vessel wall is what kind of starts the process off for plaque formation. So less damage to our blood vessels means less plaque formation. It's one of the key steps when it comes to this. And so anything we can do to slow down the progression or the development of plaque inside of our arteries is going to be incredibly good for helping prevent heart attacks and strokes. And at least in this one study, 
our wonderful motherwort compounds seem to have some benefit here. But again, these are animal studies, so take that as you may, but it does follow some of the traditional uses of this herb. When we look at human studies, they have looked at the use of motherwort when it comes to hypertension in people who also have anxiety and sleep issues. So in theory, this is the perfect fit for this herb because two of its main uses are cardiovascular disease and anxiety. And so it's not surprising that in this study, they did find really good results with only 12% of people not responding, not having any improvements. And when I mean improvements, I mean improvements to their emotional well-being and certainly a lowering of that blood pressure. Furthermore, in another animal study, they found that leonurin again is protective against some of the negative consequences that hypertension can have on our heart tissue. So when we have high pressure, aka blood pressure is high, for an extended amount of time, it can be extremely straining on the heart and you can see enlargement of the heart, stretching, scarring, and a general dysfunction if the blood pressure is high enough for long enough. So when they induced heart damage in mice because of high blood pressure, they found that in the population taking the extract, they had less heart damage and more functional heart tissue because of taking the compound. So again, here we are seeing its use as a protective agent against stressors on the cardiovascular system. And they're looking at different types of stressors and finding a reoccurring theme. Again, another animal study looked at the use of motherwort when it comes to arrhythmias, so irregular heartbeats. Again, in these studies, they found that there was a positive impact. One of the things they specifically looked at was motherwort's impact on our L-calcium channels, which is a target of a lot of prescriptive medications like calcium channel blockers. So our medications that are already very much ingrained into our conventional medical system have overlapping mechanisms with this herb. And just to be a little bit more specific about it, I'm talking about something like a tachycardia, meaning an increased heart rhythm. So this herb helps with stimulation of the heart, too much stimulation of the heart. So excess heartbeats. It wouldn't be helpful in the other direction now these aren't all of the uses, but they are the ones that I feel like have the best supportive evidence. You will see that it's used for a lot of different things. It makes its way into a lot of combination products that are just designed for overall cardiovascular support. But those are the few mechanisms that I find are pretty reliable when it comes to this particular herb. So let's move on to the preparation of the herb because in herbal medicine, there's lots of different ways to take it. You can take things in tea formation, you can do a dried powdered formation or put into a capsule. Sometimes they'll use various different extracts to get different compounds out of the plant, tinctures. There's lots of different ways to use these herbs. The different preparations will pull different compounds out of a plant. So a lot of the times it's not as simple as just eating the plant. A lot of these compounds are inaccessible to our regular old digestion. And so you'll use hot water, for example, to pull out some of those compounds from the plant, make them more accessible. And alcohol will pull out different compounds from the plant. And so in the case of motherwort, one of the key things in there that they attribute a lot of these benefits to are alkaloids. So leonurin is an example of an alkaloid. And generally speaking, those particular type of compounds extract more easily when you're using alcohol. And so this is why I tend to prefer tinctures for this. Tinctures is a term we use for an alcohol extraction. Now, when it comes to formulating these things in a factory, 
Sometimes they'll get creative and be able to do some of these things and then still package it into a pill. But I'm talking about very traditional style of herbal medicine. So say someone wants to go out, get their own herbs and make their own type of medicine or buy it from a herbalist. They're generally talking about herbs as teas, tinctures, sugar extracts. And in this case, I do prefer a tincture. You will see it used other ways, and I'm not saying that it's completely useless other ways, but if you really want to have a strong impact when it comes to this herb, I would opt for something like a tincture. And if you look at most textbooks, they will try and do that tincture in a one to five ratio, meaning one part plant to five parts alcohol and they will generally use a 45% alcohol extraction. So it is a very strong alcohol necessary to pull those things out of there effectively. It's also important to note that you're using the aerial parts of the plant, meaning the above the ground parts, usually the leaves. So this isn't one of those plants where the roots are where a lot of the good stuff is in general we're looking at leaves and aerial parts when we're putting things into a tincture, into a dried tea, something like that. And also note that you're gonna have to usually take these things for months in order to see the full benefit. It's not a quick fix. And so that is very important to set realistic expectations. You see this a lot with herbal medicine. Of course, there are some that work right away um, but for the most part, you kind of want to build it up in the system. So usually you want to commit a good chunk of time to being on these herbs um, before you start to expect big changes. All right, and lastly, let's talk about the safety. So generally speaking, pretty safe herb, especially if you're using low doses of it. But there are two main populations that definitely should not take this. And that is people who are pregnant and people with thrombocytopenia which is a clotting disorder. Now we didn't touch on it here, but there is a theory that motherwort has a mild blood thinning effect. I didn't find really good research on that, but hypothetically it could increase bleeding, especially in someone who already has a disorder that increases their bleeding, AKA reduces their ability to clot. And then this isn't always a hard no, but it's definitely something that I think should be done under the supervision of a licensed practitioner. And that is taking it with other cardiac medications. So other blood pressure medication, other heart and vascular medication should always be used with caution alongside motherwort. Because some of the benefits of motherwort very much overlap and there are some proposed mechanisms that are very similar to these medications. So theoretically, they could have an additive effect or a counteractive effect with some of your medication. You can sometimes take these alongside your prescriptive medications, but you do not want to do so without the guidance of a doctor. And in this case, a guidance of someone who knows how to use herbal medicine appropriately. So I hope that gave you guys a little bit of information so you feel a little bit more confident about whether or not this is a good option for you. Is this something that you could bring to your doctor and potentially discuss going on in addition to or in replacement of some of these other therapies? So thank you guys again for listening. I hope you have a fabulous day.